everyone and welcome back to Coffee Mug. I'm Elzetta and I'm here with my wonderful friend and co-host Carly. How are you today? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm excited to be back for another episode. We hope you enjoyed last week's episode about depression. and We do. I know that one was quite a tiring one for us to record and yeah. um, probably for you to listen to. But yeah, it was definitely important. It was a really nice thing to do and educate ourselves and others. And since it is something that torments lots of people, it is important to know about it, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's another reason why we've also decided on today's episode's theme. Mm -hmm. Because this is also another really important thing that everybody needs to know a little bit more about. Yeah. Especially us, actually. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to discuss OCD, or Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, a mental health condition that affects 1.2% of the UK population and 2.3% of the US population. But before we get started, you must know it by now. Our disclaimer, we want to say we're not medical professionals and the knowledge that we are sharing is based on experience and research. The purpose of our podcast is to purely educate others and ourselves. Please talk with a medical professional or someone close to you for diagnosis and help. Now, after the disclaimer, we can get started. There are many misconceptions about OCD and people believe that it's about people being afraid of gems all the time being organized and need everything but there's so much more than that carly would you like to tell us about it yeah definitely so like alizette has touched upon ocd or obsessive compulsive disorder is a common mental health condition where a person has obsessive thoughts or compulsive behaviors ocd can affect men women and children some people start having symptoms early around puberty but it usually starts during early adulthood OCD can be distressing and significantly interfere with your life, but treatment can help you keep it under control. If you have OCD, you'll usually experience frequent obsessive and compulsive disorders. So an obsession is an unwanted and unpleasant thought, image or urge that repeatedly enters your mind, causing feelings of anxiety, disgust or unease. So I'm going to list some common OCD obsessions, which are fear of being contaminated by gyms, dirt or contaminating others, fear of losing control and harming yourself or others, intrusive sexually explicit or violent thoughts and images, excessive focus on religious or moral ideas, fear of losing or having items you might not need, order or symmetry, so the idea that everything must line up just right, or superstitions, excessive attention to something considered lucky or unlucky. And then on the other hand, there's also compulsions. So compulsions is a repetitive behaviour or mental act that you feel you need to do to temporarily relieve the unpleasant feelings brought on by the obsessive thoughts. Common compulsion behaviour in OCD include excessive double checking of things such as locks, appliances and switches, repeatedly checking in on loved ones to make sure they're safe, counter tapping, repeating certain words or doing other senseless things to reduce anxiety, spending a lot of time washing or cleaning, ordering or arranging in things just because, praying excessively or engaging in rituals triggered by religious fear, or and accumulating junk such as old newspapers or empty food containers. So now we've explored a little bit about what the common behaviours of OCD is, let's talk about how we can help people affected by OCD. Elizetta, did you want to take over? Yes, of course. Thank you so much for that, Carly. If someone close to you has OCD, it is important to try to support them and understand them. It can be difficult, but you trying is something that is going to be greatly appreciated. Try to be patient with your person. You might not thoroughly understand what they're going through, but the least you could do is be patient. Don't criticize their thoughts or emotions. Not only will they feel bad, but they will less likely be able to be open to you in the future. Support them and help them with their compulsions. Reassure them of their emotions. When you don't engage or help the person with their compulsion, it might trigger their anxiety even more. So please listen and help your friend and loved one. Provide them with the support they need and deserve. When your person wants to carry out a compulsion, it is important to find appropriate approach for both of you. Also, discuss it if you can't help with the compulsion. It is really important to accept that it's not possible to offer reassurance all the time. If you're close and you know it is okay, you can help them challenge their compulsions and their OCD. Also, you can just offer them a hug and your love. There is nothing a hug can fix. Educate yourself. As we have said a hundred times this year, it is really, really important to be aware of mental disorders and learn how you can help the people around you. 
but not only the people around you, but also yourself. It might be difficult to take care of a person with OCD or another disorder, so make sure you're looking after yourself. Seek advice when needed. Carly, do you have anything you would like to add? I think I just want to reiterate this point, really. Just please be patient with people. Remember that their fears are really real to them, even if they seem unrealistic, irrational, or extreme to you. Don't judge them. It can be upsetting to hear about someone's obsessive thoughts, but if you act shocked or judge them, they'll be less likely to share their thoughts in the future. And yes, please, please, please find out as much as you can about OCD. This will help you understand what your loved one is going through or you're going through yourself. And you can read about it at places like OCD UK, OCD Action Websites. Actually, all these websites and links, we're going to link on our website mm-hmm. and our social medias just so you can find it more and you can do your own research into it. Yeah, of course, we're going to add everything on our social media and our website. Before we close this podcast, I just want to have like a short discussion about it. And what do you think? How how can you help someone reassure their emotions? Like, how do you do that? So on research and just from personal experience, I feel like it's really important to keep conversations with loved ones about OCD short. Mm-hmm. I feel that dragging things on um, is not helping. Uh, let's use the um, checking things as an example. Elizetta, if you have OCD and you're checking the door three times mm-hmm. and I cut you off and I'm like, get in the car, quit, we're running late. You haven't checked uh, the door three times. You're probably really panicking. Your questions are probably something along the lines of, did I do it right? Is the door locked? Is someone now going to break in? Like, what's going to happen? I feel it's really important to keep the response as short as possible. Assure them that they did their compulsion right, that it was okay that they did that, and they're not they're not going nuts. It's fine. Yes, you did lock the door. I watched you lock the door. Everything's okay. End of story. Don't need to drag it out any longer than that because that can make them panic even more. So I feel like keeping things really short and concise, but also being aware that these persons or people are really panicking and worried about their compulsions. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for answering this question. And my last question would be, how can you help someone um, challenge their compulsions and their OCD? What do you think? Yeah, so before you even begin to challenge someone's compulsions, I think you really do need to set yourself up and think, do this person that I'm challenging trust me? Like, am I in a position where I can be challenged or I can challenge that person and they have complete trust in me to know that I'm either not going to judge them or I'm not going to do something which is going to cause them even more anxiety. If the answer is yes, and you are trusted, go for it. I think it's really important to have a conversation with them and think, okay, you haven't got your OCD under control. We've gone to the uh, doctors, or we've um, looked into getting more help, and it's not, it's working, but we need to do something further. I think definitely sitting them down and going, next time you feel that you need to do this, or next time you're thinking about this, we're going to try this instead. And I feel like if you're both on the same page and you both agree that maybe, yeah, trying this and challenging this compulsion is healthy and good for you, go for it. Do it in a, like I said before, do it in quite a quick and non-judgmental way. So if you feel that, oh, you're doing your compulsion, let's try this instead. Oh, you locked the door. Let's get in the car and think, oh, I did lock the door and I did check it the once. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's move on. And instead, we're going to listen to some music or we're going to, um talk about something or talk about something else just something that's not the compulsion because reminding people about their compulsions is also something that triggers more anxiety and can trigger more obsessive and compulsive thoughts right thank you so much for that thank you it's really important to know and educate ourselves each other and thank you we hope you found this episode educating as well uh, please leave comments on our YouTube or website or our social media. Feel free to reach out to us. Don't forget Coffee Mug Podcast, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our Coffee Mug Podcast website. And yeah, we'll look forward to being with you guys again soon. Yeah, see you next week.